series of these videos and I'll link it in the description below. These are just going to be some tips that I've learned from living with housemates and living with my partner. It might not be completely applicable to you if you like have kids or if you you know live in a dorm room or something because I've never had those experiences but hopefully you can take some of these points and apply them to your life anyway. As always if you enjoy the video I would love it so much if you would give it a thumbs up. Also, I built this background for another video and I thought it was really pretty and I was just like, ah, I don't want all that effort to go to waste. So I'm using it for the other one and for this one because I like it. So my first point is to lead by example. Never push someone into trying to take on any lifestyle choice that you make. It shouldn't matter what it is. If you've all of a sudden come to a realization that um, you want to downsize what you own or you want to purge or declutter or whatever you want to call it, don't push that on anyone else. That is your realization and that is something that you need to deal with personally. Absolutely approach your partner, family, whoever you're living with, housemate, and tell them what you're going to be doing and explain to them why you're choosing this path and that might help them see what you're seeing. But I don't think that you should go and shove it onto someone else and expect them to do the same. In fact, if you do that, they're more likely to resist and more likely to push away. Obviously, you guys know that I've been on my journey for a while and I started filming these videos a while ago as well and I started even before then and now Bo has finally started culling his wardrobe. He, I would call him a collector. He collects shoes, he collects hats, he collects basketball jerseys, but his regular wardrobe, he's actually started to downsize. So just keep doing what you're doing, decluttering your schedule, sorting out your finances, decluttering the actual possessions in your life and other people will see the impact that that makes. Second, a fun way to declutter is to make a game out of it, especially if it is with someone else who is a bit more resistant or unsure of the idea. So something that you could do is to say, uh, I don't know, let's go and we'll declutter and we'll reduce by five items each every week. So every single week, both of you, the three of you, however many there are, are taking away and getting rid of five items from the household. Something really important as well is tolerance. For example, a lot of people attach their memories to objects, or you might be more like me and not really have any sentimental items. I get asked a lot about what I do with them and I just don't own any. Like That's just what I'm like. I don't attach memories or feelings to objects. Remember that it is a spectrum. Some people have no attachment to objects and some people are super attached to their objects. So it might take someone a little bit longer, they might not understand what you're doing and you might have to actually sit down and have a good chat with them about it. That leads into the next point I'd like to cover, which is that everyone does things at different rates, obviously. You might be the kind of person who can go through your house and just declutter everything overnight, whereas a lot of people need to take things in stages. So if the person that you are living with would like to start decluttering, it's more manageable for them and they can take it stage by stage and look at it as smaller processes rather than one large thing that is happening in their life. Because you don't build up all the clutter overnight, so you can't get rid of it overnight in most most cases. Learn to compromise. So when I was living with just housemates uh, and before Bo moved in, I didn't own a TV, my housemate didn't own a TV, we didn't own sound systems or anything like that, it just wasn't important in our lives and I know if I was ever living on my own or with housemates again, I personally wouldn't have a TV. I don't see it as something that is a necessity. But when Bo moved in, he brought a TV. Obviously in our house now we have a TV and a big sound system. There are things that he likes, he enjoys, he uses a lot. So of course I'll compromise and let those things be in the lounge room. But at the same time, he compromises for me and lets me decorate in just black, white, gray and plants. Sharing a space with someone, you should be able to work with them and come to an equal medium about how the space is going to look and how it is going to feel for both of you. You don't want to ostracize the person who is living in your house. Remember that it's their space too, just as much as it is yours. 
Something that I think is quite key is having your own little sanctuary and I don't just mean you as the minimalist but I mean every individual in the house should have a small area, it doesn't matter whether it's a desk or whether it's as small as a corner or whether it's a whole bedroom, you should have an area that is your own that is decorated to your taste and that you can feel at complete ease in. We're lucky enough that we have an apartment with two bedrooms, the main bedroom, the one that we sleep in, that's the one that is decorated the way that I like, the only things of Bo's in there are some of his clothes in the wood wardrobe and then the second bedroom is the study sort of room which Bo has set up with like his computer and his hats and shoes and all of that sort of thing that actually displayed like a collection and I don't have any of my things in there and I don't have to go in there and I don't have to look at it. So if you can't colour it completely at least get them to organise it. I know he's gone through and organised all his clothes and his collections although there is a lot of things he does have them organised neatly. Now again, it doesn't have to be a whole room, even if it's just something like your desk, like having a desk set up the way that you like it, it's clean, it's minimal, it's neat, it doesn't have all the clutter lying around, that's your area. Find your area of the house that you can have exactly how you want and then compromise on the other spaces. The last point that I want to make is don't let your new lifestyle choice come between you and the person that you live with. The journey should be a positive one, an empowering one, and one where you can learn a lot about yourself. You can't force it down someone else's throat. You have to be kind, you have to be patient, and you have to be tolerant of what they're going through and the rate at which they change. If they're really not willing to budge on getting rid of some of their items, start working on other areas. If you start focusing on your budgeting and reducing expenses and finding out more ways to save money, they'll probably want to do the same with that. A lot of people like to learn how to save money. Another area is scheduling. So if you start looking at your daily schedule, replanning, finding more free time, that's probably something that they would enjoy as well and work on that together work on your calendars and look at your work schedules and figure out when you can spend more time together it's a very personal journey so focus on yourself focus on your own journey set some goals for yourself and figure out what you want to get out of it if you want some direction I do have the 30 day challenge that you can download I'm thinking of writing another extra 30 days so if you guys would like that so it would become like a two month challenge let me know so I know they're quite some simple tips, but I hope you were able to gain something from that. That's just some things that I've learned in my experience living with someone who is not a minimalist. And I hope you really enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.